Hey, what's up Rotary Swing Golfers? Welcome back to a brand new video this week. I'm RST instructor Chris Tyler, and this week we are focusing in on the 2018 British Open champion, Francesco Molinari, who was able to play Carnusti this entire weekend without making a bogey, which is absolutely incredible. So congratulations to Francesco. We get a lot of write-ins and requests on ways to become more consistent in the golf swing. And Francesco's got a lot of key points in his swing that we're gonna be focusing in on this week so that you can start implementing those into your own swing and become a much better ball striker this year. So let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, so we're gonna start off this video with one quick caveat by saying that not every single time that we do a tour analysis do these players have 100% of the RST fundamentals in place, but we are gonna focus on some of the key points and some of the attributes that are very common with what we teach at Rotary Swing. So, we're gonna go ahead and look at Francesco's impact position very close up today, both face on and down the line. So let's go ahead and get into the point of contact, both down the line and face on. And the first thing that we're gonna focus on from a face on perspective, and this is a really key point for a lot of you golfers out there trying to get control of the bottom of the swing arc, is the position of the lead shoulder. Your lead shoulder is gonna be your primary pivot point in the golf swing. Okay, this is gonna determine where the club wants to bottom out. Now, if the lead shoulder is perfectly stacked over on top of the left ankle, so you have the left ankle, left hip, left knee, and left shoulder all stacked right on top of one another, then we know the golf club, when both hands and arms are fully extended, is going to bottom out just inside the lead shoulder. So we would have the ball position just off of our left ear in order to be able to hit down on the golf ball and compress it. So now, here's what I want you to think of. If this left shoulder moves back in this direction at all, what does that do to the bottom of the swing arm? Well, that shifts it back, right? And so when you shift the bottom of the swing arc further back in this direction, what does that force you to have to do with your hands? Well, it forces you to have to throw it a little bit earlier, so it's gonna make it much harder for you to be able to maintain lag, um, can start making you really flip the club, can get you into some lackluster impact positions where you don't have forward shaft lean. So we really wanna to work to have the lead shoulder as close to being stacked on top of the left ankle as humanly possible. This is a, actually a very safe position that he's worked into. And it's also a good consistent position that allows us to control the bottom of the swing arc. So first thing being position the lead shoulder. Let's work on getting that stacked all the way on top of the left ankle. Now, second attribute, position of the lead wrist. Okay, when we are over onto our left side, we are looking to have this left wrist either flat or slightly bowed. What that's gonna allow us to do is gonna allow us to stay in control of the club. It's gonna allow us to lean the shaft forward, which in turn is gonna lead to compression. If we see our hands further back in this direction and the club head working in this direction, then we know that we flipped it and that in turn is gonna be adding loft, which generally around 80% of the shot shape that you see in the air is gonna be dictated by face angle and the other 20% is dictated right around with the path. So if you're changing the face angle very quickly at the bottom of the arc, chances are you're gonna have some erratic ball striking behavior. So first thing, position lead shoulder. Second thing, position of the lead wrist. Now the third thing is the position of the spine. Being able to maintain spine angle throughout the entire golf swing, takeaway, backswing, downswing, and even long into the follow through is really critical because that's gonna keep us from having to make compensations with the hands and the arms. It's gonna allow us not to have this carousel effect from our, our spine where we're having to work on timing and get the spine back into its original position from where it started. So if I back this up to his starting point, you're gonna see that his spine angle is exactly where it was when he started the golf swing. So you don't see any sort of variance in that. Now, one of the key points that allows him to be able to maintain his spine angle down in the hitting area is right down here, his trail foot. You will see a lot of great ball strikers with their trail foot rolled in on the ground. You will not see them with their right foot kicked up. Now, you will see it with their driver swings where they have kicked the right foot up off the ground. Now, all that does, yes, we are working on leveraging the ground. We are working on uh, using the right side to help kind of get things out of the way. And we are working to try to get the hips cleared out as much as humanly possible. But with an iron swing, what the right foot does is it helps us maintain posture and it also allows us to stall the body and allow the hands and arms to work independently from the body at this point so we can release the club for max speed at the bottom of the arc. Okay guys, so those are the really key points of the body positions that you're gonna be looking for when you get into impact. You're gonna be looking for a good position of the lead shoulder, they're going to look for a good position to lead wrist, and then you're going to look to make sure that you're maintaining spine by keeping that right foot down on the ground. So we've got some videos here to help you out with that. You've got the roll of the right foot in the downswing. We've got impact alignments face on and impact alignments down the line. Check those videos out. 
Let's work on getting those, those body positions all sorted out this year, and I guarantee it you'll start hitting the ball much, much better. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Thanks again for joining us on the YouTube channel here today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those up below. I'll help you out as best I can. Obviously, we understand that there's thousands of other variables that lead to good consistency in the golf swing, and I just wanted to focus in on some of the key points that you could start putting into your golf swing. So let's get out there and try to put those to use. Also, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, go ahead and do so now. Um, and also, one other thing, if you want to see a bonus video called The Role of the Right Foot in the Downswing, which is one of our premium videos, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below for you. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you over to the site. You can watch that video for free in its entirety and start getting to work on adding that attribute to your golf swing. And I guarantee it, you'll start getting a good dose of speed and a good dose of consistency. Also, do me one other big favor. Click that thumbs up and let's get out there and let's play some great golf.